Number two, aesthetic recognition. We appreciate the aesthetic values of beauty, art, and other concepts such as nobility and honor. Dawkins admits this as well, quote, Well, we're hugely different from other animals in that we have language, we have art, we have mathematics, philosophy, um, we have all sorts of emotions that other animals probably don't have. End quote. The Dawkins' quote here comes from an interview recorded at 2009 on RTE's Late Late Show, and this is, spoiler alert, the only quote from an actual specialist in the related field in this whole section. And it does not support Brooks as much as he'd like it would, but let's allow Brooks to continue. Today we don't find even crude drawings on the dwellings of animal caves that are made by the animals themselves. Though they can be trained to imitate human behavior in some respects, it is a far cry from the human ability we see in art museums and libraries. Yes, it's true. We don't find drawings made by animals in their natural habitats, but we do find lots of other things, from interior decoration, clearly using colors and even more complex tricks such as optical illusions, to dance, to singing. And just so you don't think I'm focusing only on birds, here's some mammals instead, to using makeup, etc, etc. Are you noticing a pattern? All of these rituals that seem to be at least somewhat aesthetically pleasing to us are designed to be pleasing to the potential mate. And we, humans, are not entirely free from that, finding physically attractive people to also be aesthetically pleasing. Think about the features such as symmetry, the smoothness of skin, the glossy cleanliness of hair, the proper proportions. All of these represent the increased likelihood of the mate producing healthier offspring. And while the study into the subject is rather young, there is already a lot of material out there that seems to confirm this hypothesis. From a research done on rats' preferences of abstract shapes, revealing a possible link to rat body proportions, described in the 2014 paper by Jessica Wynn et al., to a 2013 study of facial beauty by Ilya I.E. that used the example of domesticated silver foxes to show how neoteny was the likely culprit and how it relates to us the product of neoteny ourselves. Of course, not everything related to the perception of beauty can be explained purely by modified algorithms of selecting a mate. For instance, preferences in both natural landscapes and in architecture seem to be at least partially influenced by how good these places would be to live in. This is called the habitat theory. Now, are those explanations sufficient to explain the entirety of ways in which humans appreciate art and beauty? Now, of course not. As I've said, the field is still in its infancy, and due to how complex the issue is, these questions are not going to be solved in a few years of research. However, the first steps in figuring out this puzzle are already being made, such as the hypothesis by Camilo J. Silla Conde et al. in Volume 8 of In the Light of Evolution that describes two different systems, an initial and a delayed aesthetic networks being responsible for the phenomenon of aesthetic recognition. This seems to neatly parallel the dual process theory in psychology, and it could be the same phenomenon responsible. The proposed cause is most certainly the same – the conservation of resources in the most resource-hungry organ in our body. Interestingly, the described process also seems to parallel the process of moral decision-making. Could it be that what actually differentiates us from animals in this regard is the appearance or more likely, improvement of the second, more controlled and conscious process slash network? If so, then this proposed gap is not as unbridgeable as it appeared to be. Another key point is made by Dahlia W. Zadel in Chapter 11 of Art and Brain, the relationship of biology and evolution to art. That is, that sporadic art appeared a long time before any actual practice of art and the appearance of the latter seems to be correlated to the development of civilization and the changes in the form and structure of human societies. So, can we say that art is uniquely human? Well, some forms of art seem to be, but it's clear that aesthetic recognition, and this is what Brooks used as the actual difference, is found in other animals, in at least some, possibly unconscious, form. Even if we do allow Brooks to use specifically art as the difference, it still fails to satisfy the third criteria since it doesn't seem to be unreachable by unguided evolution. In fact, it appears to fit the basic idea that these are just exaggerated remnants of our ancestral survival mechanisms quite well. <laughs>